Hello you guys, welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. I'm the Watchman on the Wall, Nikki Pratt. It is December 18th. I am so honored, I have to say honored, to be able to bring you this revelation knowledge concerning Numbers 9, 1, 1, 9, 11. Yes, 9, 1, one, if you could see it in the background, I got the numbers posted up. I'm going to tell you, those numbers just kept falling. The enemy is mad. If you could see the title of the video, which I think this is going to be the title of the video, what the enemy did not want you to know about 911. And after this revelation knowledge that you will receive today, you will understand why the enemy want you to believe that that number was bad. In this video, you will know that there is a God, that there is a mighty God, and that there is no way that man, you will hear a lot of people say that man put the Bible together. You will hear a lot of people that say, oh, uh, uh, there's chapters missing in the Bible. Uh, we can't go by uh, 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 the Bible is 119. You can't, we can't go by the Bible. You would know in this video that Man could not have put this together. You're going to know that these numbers that you're seeing, body of Christ, hear me. This is not from Satan. A lot of us way back when, before we even knew Revelation on a lot of these numbers, we thought, what is this? We all went to the Lord in our prayer closets and the numbers got stronger. Why this is going on? Let me give you a disclaimer. From the beginning, we have always heard of, of people like Sylvia Brown and all the diviners. See, the enemy brought in numbers early on because he knew in the end time, the Lord determines the end from the beginning. He knew. So he would get divination on the scene and make it look wicked. So when it was time for the body of Christ, hear me somebody. To know what was going on in the world with these numbers or what the Lord was saying with these numbers that we would shy away from it. But the devil is a liar. Remember the 119, the 911 video that I did recently, maybe a week or two ago, letting you know that the Lord was getting ready to show and tell about that 911, taking that number back. And it ain't like he never lost it. Hear me now, because he created numbers. And actually, there's a book in the Bible dedicated to numbers. Hello. So before, because you don't understand, the Bible says my people have gone in captivity because they have no knowledge. They have no knowledge. Before we cast down, see, we, 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 we bring about things upon, talk about things negatively because we don't understand it. But revelation, knowledge, and understanding comes today because we're going to start in what? Proverbs chapter 9, 10, and 11. And this is where the Lord wanted me to start, and I didn't know why until now. So chapters 9, 10, 11, and look, I know a lot of you are seeing 9, 11. You're also seeing 119. And that is because he determines the end from the beginning. You're going to see it backwards and forward. Okay? So stay with me. Get your pens. Your highlighters, your books, your tablets, your paper, your coffee, your cookies, whatever it is, your popcorn, whatever it is. I need you to hear me with your spiritual ears and I need you to see me, not me, see the God in me, see the God in me. I like to point people to Christ, not to me. Don't pay no attention to me. I'm just the vessel. Amen. Okay. Right here, right here in the word, 9, 10, 11. Y'all see how the Lord gave me that? I was like, wow, look at that. You, you got to see it. 9, 10, 11. Okay. And he wants me to start here. So let's roll. Okay. With a prayer. <laughs> let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, I am honored. Your people are honored. Lord, we thank you for the revelation knowledge that you have given us today. Lord, you said up on in your Bible, in the word of God, that up on this rock, you have built your church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Father, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, we give you glory. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over the heart and mind of your people. I pray, Lord God, that they will understand with revelation knowledge like never before. 
Father, Lord, in Jesus name, you are crying out to your people and letting them know <laughs> who you are in this season. And Lord, we thank you for it. We glorify you, O oh Lord. Lord, I bind every retaliation spirit. Lord, every governing principality, spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness and high places. I decree and declare and laminate over our lives. Psalms 91 in Jesus mighty name. Satan is defeated and we are redeemed. Amen. Okay. All right. So a lot of y'all know that in the past I've done videos about somehow it, it, it comes, it, it is these babies are being born in the earth. Y'all heard about the baby born at 7-Eleven, the baby born at 6-12 or 6-21, the baby born at, um, on 9-11. So there was a baby born on September 11th that came to me. I got a little revelation knowledge, but it wasn't really going anywhere at that time. I put it aside until now. Now is the time. But this video is not about the baby, but there is a message for the church. There is a message for the body of Christ. So again, this is hot and heavy. I'm telling you, you may need Kleenex tissue. I don't know, but this is, this is heavy. You guys heavy. All right. So everywhere I look, I'm seeing 119 and 911. Stay with me in your Bibles. Have your highlighters out. Again, the Lord wants me to start here. I want you to look at chapter one. Chapter nine, I'm sorry. Chapter nine in the book of Proverbs. Everybody know that the book of Proverbs deals with wisdom, right? So I'm gonna read verse one first. On your own time, I want you to read verses one through 11 because it's chapter nine through 11, right? Okay, so verse one. Wisdom had builded her house. She had hewn out of seven her seven pillars. Verse nine through 11. Give instructions to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Okay, chapter 10. I'm going to read verse 1. On your own time, read verses 1 through 11. You got to see this, but I'm going to read 9 through 11 for video time's sake. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverted his ways shall be known. He that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covered the mouth of the wicked. Moving right along, chapter 11. I'm going to read verse 1, and then I'm going to skip down to verse 9 through 11. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Verse nine, a hypocrite and hypocrite with his mouth destroyed his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. My Bible in parentheses says righteous. Okay. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoice, rejoice it. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting by the blessing of the upright. The city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Okay. So that's all those chapters. Stay with me. Stay with me. Okay. I need you to highlight those chapters 9, 10, and 11 and highlight verses 9 through 11. Okay. Now the pattern in these three chapters, wicked, righteous, and foolish wicked righteous foolish okay wicked righteous foolish now i need you to turn to the book of ezra in your bible wow my bible went right to it i kid you not and it was just 9 11 i'm 9 11 minutes in okay anyway um ezra chapter 9 but first, I'm going to read chapter 10, verse 1, and then I'm going to read 9 through 11, okay? Ezra, chapter 10, verse 1. Now, when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept, 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 wept very sore. I want you to highlight assembled, okay? I want you to highlight praying, 
uh, no, okay, not praying, but uh, yeah, assembled. Just highlight the word assembled, okay? Now, I'm going to skip down and I'm going to read verses 9 through 11 in chapter 10 of Ezra. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves, highlight gathered, together unto Jerusalem within three days. How like three days? It was the ninth month. Hello. It was the ninth month. And on the twelfth day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter, and for the great rain. Verse 10, and Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Verse 11, now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of fathers of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land. That's what's going on right now. And from the strange wives up. Highlight, separate yourselves, okay? Let's go on over to Ezra chapter 9. On your own time, I need you to read verses 1 through 11 because that's going to be a 9, 11, okay? But for video time's sake in Ezra chapter 9, I'm going to read verse 1 and 2 because you need to get where this is going. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands doing according to the abomination of the Canaanites with the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, and the Ammonites. All right? The Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, highlight holy seed, have mingled themselves with the people of those lands, yea, the hand of the princes and rulers had been chief in their trespass. Skipping on down. Skipping on down. Verse 11. I'm going to skip 9 and 10. I'm going to read just verse 11 in chapter 9. Which thou hast commanded by the servants the prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it, it is unclean land. It is an unclean land with the filthiness of the people lands with their abominations which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanliness. You got to see this. So there is a pattern, a holy seed, remnant, holiness versus uncleanliness. In chapter 10, it was also a gathering, praying and crying and weeping. Okay, hold on to that. Hear me with your spiritual ears, okay? So anytime you want to understand something's purpose, you have to go to the beginning of where it was first mentioned, okay? So remember, he determines the end from the beginning. Let's go first to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, I think that is right after the book of Proverbs. Uh, yeah, right after the book of Proverbs. Yes, okay. We're going to start at chapter 9, verse 1 through 11. I'm not going to read all that. I'm just going to read verse 1 and 2, but I need you to highlight in chapter 9 of Ecclesiastes, verses 1 through 2, but on your own time, read verses 1 through 11. So I'll read verse 1 and 2. For all this I considered in my heart even to declare all this, that the righteous, hello somebody, and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. Verse 2. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. Lately, the Lord has been um, focusing on the righteous and the wicked. The righteous versus the wicked, right? Right. Okay. So it says to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrifice it and to him that sacrifice it not as is the good. So is the sinner and he that swear it as he that feareth an oath. Okay. All right. Hmm. 
Lord have mercy, Jesus. Let's look at, I want you to notice something. Now I'm going to read, I'm going to start in chapter nine of Ecclesiastes. I'm going to start at verse eight because you need to see this. And then I'm going to read verses nine through 11. Okay. Let thy garments be always white and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of the vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with the might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. Whether thou goest, verse 11, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not given to the swift, nor to the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of the understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happening to them all. Now we finna get ready to enter into the climax. Right now you may be saying like, okay, why is she going through this? I'm not getting it. Look, I'm doing what the Lord say do. You just hang tight. Because I'm telling you, some of y'all gonna be shouting. Some of y'all gonna be crying. I'm hoping and praying I can make it through here without crying. Just hang on. Okay, so skip on over to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Why Matthew chapter 22? I didn't know until the other day okay all right matthew chapter 22 i've been hanging on and waiting till the lord said go and he said go and i opened up my bible today it was in chapters 9 10 and 11 i mean i've been seeing it so much matter of fact let me show y'all something before i even get started right before as i'm preparing for this video I come in the living room, look at the stove. You see this? Whoa. Whoa. Let's see if you can see this. Nope, that didn't work. Anyway, you see that? Yeah. 119. Now 911. Mm, yeah. So anywho, Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 11, read on your own time. Well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. In this verse right here, I have to read it, okay? Verses 1 through 11 in this chapter, I'm going to read it, okay? It says, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed and all things are ready come unto the marriage, but they made light of it and went their ways. One of his form, another to his merchandise and the remnant, highlight remnant, took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and turned up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage, invite to the marriage. Mm. So those, this is verse 10. Are y'all seeing this pattern? Wow. Ooh, Lord have mercy. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So everybody know about this parable. All right. Now I need you to, before I give it up, I want you to skip over to Matthew chapter 25. That was verses, uh, nine, one, uh, verses one through 11. And then I read nine through 11. The Lord wants us to see this pattern. I didn't understand why. Ver chapter 22. I'm like, okay, that ain't got nothing to do with nine and 11, but it did. Watch this. Matthew chapter 25. For video time's sake, you guys, um, 
Watch this. Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. We know in the other parable, the king was who? Yep, sure was. Jesus. And in this, the bridegroom is Jesus again, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Skipping on down. Everybody know that this, this parable in chapter 25 of Matthew is about the wise and the foolish brides. Remember Proverbs was talking about the wise and the foolish. Are y'all seeing this pattern? Woo, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And then, all oh, I'm going to skip to verse um, 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, let there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Oh, my goodness. If you look at verse 6, y'all, it said, And at midnight a cry went out. I want to remind y'all of an event that just happened. Now, I'm not saying that this have no, no relation to it, but I'm just saying. Remember the moon at 12-12. On 12-12. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Skip on over. Remember I said in order to understand something purpose, you got to go to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning in Genesis chapter First, I'm going to start at Genesis chapter 6 before I go to, uh, before I go to Genesis, take you to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. You're going to see this pattern with 9, 11 all through this Bible, all through this Bible. Watch this. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. And perfect in the generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt, corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. What did it say about my Bible says in italicies that Noah was blameless. Noah walked with God. If you're not seeing this now, let me open your eyes. All these verses, 9 through 11, that means what? You belong to Christ. You walking with God. Whoo, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, help me, help me. Oh, verse 8 said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Help me, Lord, Jesus. I need you to skip over to Psalms 911. If you didn't get that, you fixing to get it now. Let's not, I'm sorry. Yes, Psalms chapter 119. Skip over to Psalms chapter 119. My Bible just flipped there. Look at verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. In parentheses, my Bible says blameless. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Oh, my God. Blessed are the undefiled. Why is it that verse 9 through 11 in the book of Genesis, talking about Noah being blameless, blameless, was verses 9 through 11? And in 119 verse 1, oh, my goodness. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. God's secret is in the word of God. He talked in parable. But those that belong to him will be the ones that only understand. Hello? Hello, somebody. I want you to read chapters 119 of Psalms, verse 1 through 11 on your own. Now, for Christ's birthday, let me show you. Why September 11 happened. Because the enemy knew that there was something with this number. And let me prove to you. 
Christ's birthday. Remember I told y'all a long time ago that I will show you. Now I'm going to show you. Let's get on over to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Verse 9 through 11. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this day. Woo, help me, Jesus. For unto you this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. That's why Henry and Monique, you saw that prophet making mockery of 119, trying to get money off of it. Woo, Lord, help, help, help. Now, that's Christ's birthday. I want you to look at verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Oh, Lord, I love to give you glory. Now, for those that may say, okay, Nikki, well, what? I don't believe that's his birthday. Where does that tell you, honey? Let's get spiritual here. Let's be the, so the, let me show it to you. In my Bible, in verse 11, my Bible references Isaiah chapter 9. When the Holy Spirit is lead, leading, he's going to confirm and it will bear witness with your spirit. Okay? Let's get on over to the book of Isaiah chapter 9. If you didn't see it, you finna see it now. The book of Isaiah chapter who? 9. Why it had to be 9? This is why. This, everybody know chapter 9, is talking about Jesus the Christ. Verse 8. I'm going to start at verse 8. It says, The Lord sent a word unto Jacob, and it had lit it up on Israel, and all the people shall know, even Ephraim, and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say, in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are falling down, but we will build with hewn stones. Wait, wait, wait. Am I reading the right thing? Hold on, guys. Hold up, hold up. I think, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, hold up. Let me pause the video. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Woo, I almost hit the wrong button. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. So I was in the right chapter. I need you to look at verse 6. Okay. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. On your own time, read verses 1 through 11 in this Isaiah chapter 9. You can't make this up. Okay. Now to the beginning of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Oh, Lord, I hope I can make it through this video without crying. In Genesis chapter 1, on your own time, read verses 1 through 11. But I'm going to read verse 9 through 11. And God said... Let the waters unto the heaven be gathered. You hear this? Another gathering. Unto one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 11. And God said. Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Let's skip on over to chapter 2. Now, y'all, at this point, when I read that, I was like, hmm, God said, God said, and we all know that when God say, he gonna have what he said, right? So while I'm thinking and meditating on this, I was like, so what about when Adam said, and he called the animals 
a horse and a cow, and it was so. Would that be in verse 9, 10, and 11? Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Again, things unto us is hidden, okay? But it's revealed by the Holy Spirit. Verse, I'm going to start. Now, when you look at, I want you to look at in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, 20, and 21. Y'all, of the 20s, that is the 9th, the 10th, and 11th verse. Okay? But I want to give you a heading here in verse 18. And the Lord God said, here's a picture of a marriage. Again, we still got a marriage. You see this pattern? And the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Did you hear what the Lord said? He said, whatsoever the Lord that Adam called it, it was and Adam gave names to all the cattle. And we know the story. Let's look at verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of the ribs and closed up his flesh instead thereof. We all know that that's when Eve came along. A picture of a marriage. A picture of a marriage. Okay. Now. There was a help meet for Adam. Again, look spiritually, 9, 10, 11 verse. Adam was given a bride. He had so he said he had what he said. And when he had what he said, I want y'all to see something. If you seeing this 9, 11, that would mean this. You shall have what you said. And then so it was confirmed. I was like, Lord, so that means if we are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? We know before that came Adam and all that, right? We descendants of all, all, Noah and that generation. I said, so Lord. That me, I wonder if when we see 9-11, shall we have what we say? Matthew chapter 7, let's get over there. Oh, he going to confirm. Matthew chapter 7, verse what? 9 through 11. It was confirmed. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 9 through 11, it says, Or what man is there of you? Whom, if his son acts bread, will he give him a stone? Y'all, my Bible references Luke chapter 11, 11, which is another number I'm seeing like crazy lately. Verse 10, or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? What? You can't make this up. You can't make this up. That's confirmation right there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Listen. So, if I were you, when you see 9-11, Start decreeing and declaring. Start decreeing and declaring. See, this is what the enemy didn't want you to know. Because he knew what it was. Oh, but y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Start decreeing and declaring. More heavenly bomb revelations to know only the God I serve. Look, only the God we serve can orchestrate something like this. I'm keeping going. There is only one, not Buddha, not no priest, in no confession closet. Y'all, come on. He said, Peter, up on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Let's turn over to Ezekiel. Y'all, it's finna climax. It's finna climax. 
Get your, get your, get your, get your tissues. I'm trying to tell you. Get your tissues. I almost lost it a, a few minutes ago, earlier. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 9. I'm going to start in verse 4 because I'm painting a picture. But I want y'all to look at something. Look at Ezekiel chapter 9. How many verses does it have? 11 verses. You can't make that up. Let's start at verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of them that sigh at the choir for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. How many of y'all have seen things happen lately in the earth and your choir? How many of y'all have family members that's walking wavered and backwards and you've been preaching and teaching and trying to tell them and they ain't listening? So you go in the closet in your choir. But the Lord right here says he's telling this man with this ink horn dressed in linen to go about in the city and mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry. Verse 5, and to the others he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly. The old, the young, the both maids, the little children and women, but come not near any man up on whom is the mark that begin at my sanctuary. Who is the sanctuary? The church. What is it saying? This 9-11, is it the mark? Is it the mark? Is it our mark? Y'all, verse 8. And it came to pass while they were slaying them and I was left and I fell upon my face and I cried and I said, Oh Lord God, would thou destroy all the residue of Israel and the pouring out of my fury upon Jerusalem? My Bible reference remnant. I'm going to skip down to verse 11. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Read those verses uh, for yourself. You can't make this up. The Mark, Ezekiel chapter 9 through 11. What's your name? Uh, uh, Michael George. I think it was you, you asked me about uh, uh, the number 9-11. I, I hope I didn't mess your name up. But here's your answer, honey. Here's your answer. Listen. I'm going to show y'all something. For many of y'all may be listening, you probably saying, I'm not getting it. I want you to pray. But if you haven't got it, the Lord is clearly saying in Ezekiel chapter 9, there is a remnant that belongs to him. There is a remnant that belongs to me. They walk with me. They know me. I want you to look in John chapter 17 because as I was meditating on this, I'm like, wait a minute. Lord, you prayed for us. And if I look at verse 9 through 11, if it say what I think it says, you are confirming all day long. Let's get over there. John, the book of John. Chapter 17. This is Jesus praying for the church. Verse 9 through 11. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all of mine are thine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to them. Holy Father keep through thine own name. Those whom thou hast given me. That they may be one as we are. Glory, glory, glory Jesus. Oh my God. Oh, Lord Jesus, you cannot make this up. That is verse 9 through 11. He is talking about who? He's talking about you. He's talking about you. He's talking about us. Y'all, this is verse 9 through 11. You can't make this up. 
Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. Matthew chapter 24. Again, I need y'all. Huh. Spiritually, this is hidden secrets. Hidden secrets. Heavenly secrets, okay? I want you to look at verse 29, 30, and 31. Spiritually, the 29, 9, 10, and 11, okay? 9, 10, and 11. It says, immediately in Matthew 24, after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with heaven and power and great gl glory. My Bible references Zechariah 12 and 12. Okay? Verse 31, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his select from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. You can't make this up. Let's skip on over to the book of Luke chapter four. I don't know how long this video going to be. Luke chapter four. Verse 9 through 11. And he brought him. This is when Satan was messing around with the Lord Jesus. And uh, he brought him to Jerusalem and set him up on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from this. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Y'all, my verse 10 rep. Uh, reference Psalms 91 verse 11 you can't make this up verse 11 and in their hands there shall bear thee up lest any time thou dash thy foot against the stone I want you to pay attention to another uh, another pattern there's always angels around mm. which is protection okay now watch this right when i got that revelation y'all my phone lit up at 119 just automatically lit up by itself it was 119 on my phone and i screenshotted it i want y'all to turn to the book of acts because when i read that verse it reminded me of when jesus went went up in the clouds and i said lord if what i think this is if that be 9 through 11 there is no mistaken in this get over to acts chapter 1 i'm gonna start in verse 8 and then we're gonna go through 9 11 verse 8 but ye shall receive power and after the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto both in jerusalem and in judea and samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth verse 9 and when he has spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up in a cloud receive him out of their sight and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of galilee two men standing up in white apparel hmm which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up which is uh, the same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him into heaven that spiritually is saying the way you saw him going is going to be the same way coming back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay now alright uh, I want you to look at verse 1 and 2 in, ch in the book of Acts chapter 1 the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he was through the Holy Ghost and had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. The apostles was basically his church. Hmm? It was four, it was 44, 44 when I said that. 44 minutes and 44 seconds when I said that. Lord have mercy. Okay, 
Anywho, I want y'all, when I thought about that, I thought about the two witnesses. The two witnesses. Remember, there was two people standing here when Jesus went up into heaven, right? Let's get on over to the two witnesses. It was 45 minutes and 11 seconds. There's a 9-11. Mm. Anyway, go over to the book of Revelation chapter 11. I'm going to show you something. Now, I don't like... Anyway, I'll leave it alone. But anyway, Revelation chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Hmm. Let's look at this. Verse 9 through 11. Let's see the pattern and see what happened when Moses and Elijah, who I know to be the two end time prophets, the two witnesses that chapter 11 speak about. Uh, verse nine, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, just like Jesus, y'all, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth right here, Lord, y'all again in this verse 10, just like in the other verse 10. My Bible references Revelation 12, 12. Verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, which is a picture of a resurrection, just like Jesus. And they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up into the heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Now, when I read that, y'all, in verse 12, and 13, I'm going to read verse 12 and 13. I want you to see something. I, I read 12. I'm going to read verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell in the earthquake. I read that, didn't I? Okay, it was a great earthquake. Sorry, y'all. I'm getting going too fast here. Let's turn over to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I mean, I'm going from one place to another, but this is how you need to see this. This is, I, I didn't get this from anywhere else. The whole time we've been where? In the word of God. And you cannot make this up. First Corinthians, you guys, chapter 15. This 49, 50, 51, 9, 10, and 11, right? Okay. All right, 15, verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither the corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I shall show you a mystery. We shall not all asleep. But ye shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, the, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. Now I need you to turn to Matthew chapter 27 quickly. Matthew chapter 27. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Matthew chapter 27. I want you to see something. Verses uh, 49 mm -hmm. through 51. 
The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And we everybody know that he was getting ready for this third day resurrection. Just like the witnesses. And the 49th and the 50th and 11th verse, it was the same way for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top of the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion, and they that were with him watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things were done. There was a great earthquake when Jesus gave up the ghost. And there was a great earthquake when in, in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 11. You can't make this up. You can't make this up, you guys. You can't make this up. Wow. I'm going to say it again. When you see 11-11, when you see 9-11, start rejoicing. Start decreeing and start declaring because I sure have. And I done already seen, start seeing a change you guys a change something that now don't be don't be crazy you guys and start asking for cars and stupid stuff like that no anything like healing uh, 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 you, your loved ones restored to christ he said call it and and it was it was proved in this scripture Call it whatever it is. When you see start, you start seeing nine eleven. You could pray if you want to, but start decreeing some things. Satan didn't want you to know that about this number nine one one. He didn't want you to know that. You guys, I got some powerful, powerful. If you thought this video was something, oh my goodness, I'm telling you, this revelation that is being poured out right now, and it ain't just me. It's with a whole host of us. But I'm telling you, there's another powerful video. I wish I had it ready. But I'm telling you, the enemy has been working overtime because he is mad. He don't want this to go out. Oh, no. It's too bad. It's too bad. It's too bad. Because it's out. And now what you going to do with it? See, don't be a part of that parable when the word come and it fall. You know, what ground is this word falling on with you guys? Don't worry. I know this good ground to these listeners that's listening to me. Okay? From the words of the Lord. It's good ground. Okay? So I want you guys to stay prayed up. Don't forget whose you are. Lord, I won't ever forget whose I am. Lord, I won't ever forget. Don't ever forget. Lord, I want to thank you. For every good thing comes from you. And with the gifts you gave me, I want to tell the world how much I love you. Y'all, don't get me started. I love you guys. Stay blessed. I hope you've been blessed by this word because I was, I was. Let me know if you got other revelations from this. Let me know, please. Thanks.